So hopefully you're here to um, hear about uh, how we work with Tableau, um, are really focused on speed to insights. Uh, if not, well, that's what we'll be talking about either way. Um, so the conversation is going to be largely where we're going to go over the state of artificial intelligence today. Uh, we're going to introduce you to Accenture in AIP+. I'll talk about how it works, and then we'll talk about some examples of what we're doing with Tableau. So on the AI Today side, um, so what we're talking about is really based upon, um, and I, I just heard somebody else was telling me a different survey uh, a couple minutes ago that had come out, uh, but what we see, everybody's talking about AI. So why, why is everybody talking about AI? So in terms of what we see is by 20, uh, 2035, we're really looking at, um, based upon surveys, an increase in a potential for an increase of profitability by 38%. So obviously, you know, now you have people's attention. Uh, you can see some very large numbers up here uh, in terms of we're looking for that to have an economic boost of around $14 trillion. Uh, and for that to affect 16, you know, that's across 16 industries, 12 economies. Um, so according to Forbes Insights, 92% uh, of uh, business executives uh, recognize the, uh, and evangelize the value of AI strategy. Uh, but however, only about a half of that group actually have uh, the technology and practice applications even started. So people know it's important. Uh, they may or may not know what AI is, uh, and they may or may not already have AI in practice, but they're very, they know it's very important. So what does it really mean to be an AI-powered business? So to be an AI-powered business, you really need to use all trusted data. So you need to make sure that you're actually having access to the data and you need to use that data to generate actionable insights. So not just insights that are nice to know, but you have to figure out a way to make those actionable. And then import that with the, the business process, and then figure out how to, actually, to uh, deliver on those new outcomes. Um, so in terms of new opportunities with, uh, with AI, uh, you, know, you can put up a number of things up here, but really uh, there's always new types of data coming available, depending on how long you've been ex uh, exposed to the data side. Uh, there's oh, it feels like now, for me at least, I came from a basically a data marketplace type background, and it feels like I always hear new sources of data. Uh, whether it's uh, a, a new source of how you can scrape data for free on the web, or some way we're now using IoT to track um, cars for predictive maintenance, or pump wellheads to manage their, their throttles, but there's always tons of new data coming through. Uh, and with that new data, you have the opportunity to operationalize and do automation of those new insights. Because otherwise, you're going to be, if you're not looking at the aut automation side, you're really going to be drowning in data, and you're going to be very few insights out of that. From that, looking to s simplified ways to build apps and experiences, uh, and then from there, really coming up with new it, innovations in technology and services. But with um, all new things, there are speed bumps. So now, great, I have new data types. Where do I put that data? What is that data? Uh, how do I find out information about that data? Then in terms of the operational side, how do I convert those insights into action? So I have tons of insights, but now in reality, before I was, you know, it was all about generating insights and you had a few insights. Now all of a sudden you're talking about a needle in a haystack and you have tons of insights and you're trying to figure out which ones are actually something you can act on. Uh, then in terms of simplified tools, well, great. Now how do you actually build those rapidly uh, experiences, make it so it evolves with the needs of the users? Um, so you're really looking at apps that used to be able to keep in place for a couple years now really have to evolve with the data. They have to evolve with the insights. They have to evolve with the users. So really the bar is really mu uh, very much a, you're being on an escalator. So if you're very much needing to move a lot quicker than you were before. And then great, now you have all these pieces. How do I integrate them together into an overall ecosystem? So as far as the AI side, so John Luke is um, our CTO under the Accenture Applied Intelligence Practice, uh, and I really like this uh, quote from him. The race to AI-powered transformation is the new race to the moon. Speed is the new KPI of business. And so that's where we get into introducing AIP+. Um, so AIP+, is really focused around this speed to value message. Uh, so you can see it's our collection of modular, pre-integrated AI services and capabilities documented by Accenture IP that accelerates uh, new uh, scale, new outcomes. Main areas, speed to value. 
So in terms of how do you focus instead of on, uh, okay, great, we're going to have a 12-month return on value, how do we really accelerate that? So how do we cut out the pieces? How do we cut out the provisioning? How do we make sure that's still secure? How do we pull in different models? How do we rapid applications? Um, speed the confidence. So you know, one of the big things with speed, usually the faster you're doing something, the less secure it is in general practice. So how, while you're moving quickly, do you still make sure it stays secure? Um, so we have a lot of practices in place. You'll see a number of, uh, if you're on the data side, you probably, or even if you aren't, depending on where you're from, you at least probably should have hopefully heard of GDPR by now. Uh, maybe CCPA, if you're familiar on the California side. Uh, depending on if you're in health uh, or not, maybe you'll have heard of high trust. But in reality, it's what it's coming to is, there's now tons of sources of data out there, but there are also tons of regulations. So on the one hand, that is a very big value. On the other hand, depending on what data you have, you might all of a sudden be in for a very large liability. If you had the wrong data in the wrong area at the wrong time, uh, it can be very much a problem. So uh, we have a number of uh, patents in this area around differentiating RP to make sure this stays, stays secure, and then speed to scale. Um, so how do I go from a situation where I at first want to have just a simple POC. Maybe I have something where I have, I want to build a few uh, analytics models and I want to visualize that, but I want something that I don't have to completely re-engineer it by the time I get to maybe 100 gigabytes of data or 100 parabytes of data or a petabyte of data. So how do you have something that actually uh, goes across that scale? Uh, in terms of one of the ways we really do that is around flexible commercials. Um, so AIP has... Uh, relationships with a number of vendors, um, one of which will obviously be Tableau, and I'll get to that piece a bit later. Uh, but so out of, the, out of the block, you can come through and we can provide the, uh, provide the commercials. So whether, whatever type of software it is, pre-integrated, uh, coming with the support. So you're really getting to value quicker. You're not going through and contracting with 10 different companies. Um, and then in terms of accelerators, we already have a number of accelerators pre-built in. Um, what one of the big the value props here is we're not trying to lock you in. So this is very much a glass box, not a black box. So the whole point of this isn't to go through and figure out how do you get there quickly, but then lock you into that specific service. The idea is to get you there quickly, and if you want to use that as just a building block that you take over, um, you're welcome to do that. And if at any point, you know, if you, have, uh, if you see something of interest, you have a question, uh, just feel free. We have realistically plenty of time um, if you have a question. Um, in terms of how this integrates, what we see is uh, we really start out with a, that bottom layer. Uh, number of cloud providers, uh, hopefully, if you're at all familiar with what's currently going on, you'll at least recognize some of these names, but uh, we can go through and work with AWS, Azure, Alley Cloud, uh, GCP, as well as a client-provided cloud or on-prem. Um, so once we have that base layer, we start building in our, our modules. So whether it's around data supply chain, cognition, I'll go through and define these a bit later in a second, whether it's an engagement, our core plus, our services, putting that additional layer in to be able to not, not only stand up a ecosystem, but now stand up service on top of that. And then we're bringing together uh, some more specific solutions, whether it's around uh, applied customer engagement, supply chain, asset management, crime detection. So now what we've done is we've taken a layer, you have that base layer in terms of your platform, you bring in some specific tools, and now you're bringing in specific use cases. And so, uh, if you're not familiar with Accenture, uh, hopefully many of you are, uh, but even if you're uh, familiar with Accenture, you may not know about our AI practice. Uh, so, in terms of our AI practice, we refer to what's called applied intelligence, not to be confused with artificial intelligence, which is also part of this practice. Uh, but the way we do this is not only do we have a platform, we can also pair this with, with people. Uh, so, in the way we were really looking at AI is that is data plus automation plus analytics to the power of AI. And the way we're doing that is we have uh, over 20 years of experience in the space, more than 20,000 professionals, uh, more than 16, um, 1,600 patents, uh, tons of innovation centers uh, around the globe, um, 6,000 uh, deep AI experts. Uh, and when we're talking about, you know, you'll hear a lot of times the term data scientist or uh, whatever, you know, pick your specialty in that. Uh, but when we're talking about deep AI experts, we're not talking about, let's say, the uh, visualization version of, a, of uh, data science. We're talking about truly deep experts, uh, apps, solutions. Uh, in the end, I mean, this is, uh, as far as what analysts rated us as, we're pretty much always rated in the, the upper right quadrant. So someone who's a leader in the space. Uh, more than, than 3,000 data scientists, and our definition of a data scientist, uh, does, that does not include uh, visualization experts. 
Um, so these are all people who've had to pass certifications uh, around the data science side, and it's specifically around like machine learning, deep learning, uh, those types of things. And you can see uh, quite a few partners out there. Um, so more than 100 uh, plus alliance partners. So how does all this work uh, in more detail? I told you I would get into some of the details as far as Core Plus. Uh, so you probably saw a few of these things first. So at the very bottom when we're talking about Core Plus, this is our base, our base platform layer. And this is really what allows us to quickly go through and enable all of those other nice pieces. Because in the end, you're only as strong as that initial foundation you set up. Uh, and that's why we call it uh, Core Plus. So this is our, basically, the management of the infrastructure, the, ma the monitoring of it, the deployment, uh, constantly making sure that it's the, uh, uh, in compliance, uh, that it's secure, um, that you have the support necessary there. And that's uh, basically part of that's with our services. Um, so I mentioned a few uh, before about security being one of the key aspects here. So you can see we are high trust, we're HIPAA compliant, we're FedRAMP, and I forget what the, the bottom one is there, but a uh, number of certifications were ISO 27,000 series certified. Uh, and these are really, really key for any system. Uh, because of all that focus on data, so much new data out there, data ha all of that has benefits, but it all has risks because of a lot of the new regulations coming out. Uh, and then what's being really forced in is you need to have, make sure your systems are secure. And realistically, I see over the next few years, they're most likely, I don't think we're looking for less penalties. We're more likely, we're gonna be looking for some cases that are coming out. I'm sure as each new state comes out with their own regulations, they'll be looking for their first, their first win to make sure that they show that they have teeth. Um, so uh, I'm sure C, uh, the California one, uh, CCPA, will be trying to find their first win, win uh, so to speak, once they, once they have figured out those pieces. So after you have a system and your, your uh, services associated with it, so you make sure it's secure, make sure you have the support, how do you get data into that system? So now all of a sudden it's, hey, great, I have a system. I need to figure out a way of integrating that data, setting that data up, and then making it available for users. Uh, and so that's our data supply chain. Uh, getting to the next layer is uh, Cognition Plus. So once you have the data in, you want to figure out something about that data. Um, so this is really where we're bringing in those AI experts. Uh, we have various tools around data science in this space. But the idea here is how do I, this is where those insights are really coming from. So how do I create those targets, um, those, uh, that initial feedback, uh, all of those pieces. This is the, the brains, so to speak, of the operation. And then lastly, uh, in terms of around uh, engagement. Uh, so the engagement piece is so great. You have insights. But for those insights to be useful, you have to in some way put those into practice. An insight that you can't act upon is nice, but unless you can act upon it, you might as well not have learned the insight, sadly. Um, so this is where basically that last really, let's say the last mile is the engagement piece. So figuring out how to take that insight and directly get it into action. Uh, so we have a number of tools in this space, but this is, uh, now this space is very interesting. I mean, especially from the IoT's perspective, uh, you get into some very interesting applications, whether it's uh, a smart application. Uh, if you happen by our booth, uh, one of the things that we're talking about as an example with Roche around diabetes management uh, and getting into a place where insights were created off of their tracking their blood glucose. But great, now I know something. How do I, as a healthcare professional or the insurer or maybe a device manufacturer, how do I create a process to start nudging that person in the right direction? So I'm measuring and I'm collecting and that's great, you know, everybody's, I think everybody's kind of on the road, okay, I need data to have insights, but then how do you create a process that connects with them? So is it something where you're sending them a text message, maybe you're sending them an email, uh, maybe it's a targeted reminder, uh, maybe that's not working, you still see a de deviation, then you're starting to go through and figure out how to schedule them a doctor's appointment potentially. Um, so those are an area where you're now having a waterfall of series of process, so you're actually starting to take action with those insights you're learning, and then realistically, creating a feedback loop. So once you've taken action, making sure whatever that you've applied is now feeding back to improve your models. Uh, so uh, seeing all this come together, so I talked about the Core Plus, uh, how that's built upon platforms, how it's paired with services, the security and government piece, uh, layering on top what our cognition layer, engagement, and you can start to see at the very top is getting into the ability to quickly create industry-specific solutions uh, or applications. So that's really that last mile of, so great, we have a platform, we have all those layers, 
let me start having something out of the box for your specific use case so you don't have to go through and rebuild it. It could be something along the lines of like a workforce analyzer or marketing mix model optimization. Uh, a number of pieces really come into play there. Some of the ones that I didn't really talk too much about, uh, you'll see there across the engagement layer. Uh, we have something called our Rapid Application Workbench. Uh, for some of you that may be familiar uh, with it, a little bit familiar with AIP, this was previously called Design Studio. Uh, and it's our way of quickly going through and building apps. And for us, an app is it's more than a dashboard. It's something where you're actually, whether it's running an optimization, whether it's going through and writing back to the, the database, it's creating a series of workflows that you're integrating models with and that you're actually also pulling in data potentially. Um, that's all, we have some other areas around here. Uh, of course, we, you know, if, depending on what area you're in, you may already know, uh, chatbots, um, hopefully you've probably figured out that's, that's an important thing now, uh, I'm sure. Many of you probably have Alexa. Uh, potentially, you may have Google, Siri. Uh, but chatbots are really uh, an important area. Uh, in terms of, so great, we, you know, we started with those visualizations. In the end, people just want a way they can interact and know the answer. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of stuff really focused around the chatbot virtual agent area. Um, so you can go through, instead of going through and looking at a graph, you can ask, ask a question. But not only ask a question, have it then respond. Uh, versus point going through and pulling up the dashboards. Uh, so this is uh, the conversational AI. Um, some of the big examples in that space are around when a, we've dealt with a, um, a telco provider and changing your phone number. It turns out changing your phone number, uh, sorry, porting your phone number is not that easy of a process. Um, so what we did is we went through and worked with them. Uh, it's one of the large US providers. And they, they wanted to make that easier for people. So we ended up creating a process uh, it's uh, in chat, in terms of this case, it's not voice, it's actually texting. Um, so you go through, you text, um, you, get a, you get a link, uh, it sends, starts the chat, uh, you text back and forth, and this is sadly not an easy process. Uh, if anybody of you have ever transferred your phone number from one provider to another, uh, it's not all that easy. Uh, then it just helps you, guide you through the solution. So you don't have to wait for an agent, you don't have to call them in, you can text back and forth, and it'll take care of that for you. Uh, and this is something on the conversational AI piece, uh, if you ever heard the term eating your own dog food, uh, anybody in Accenture, uh, depending on what you're, what you're working with, uh, we're currently doing a transition from Skype to Teams. Uh, depending on where you schedule your meeting, you can enter, be introduced to our, uh, one of our conversation chatbots. It will reach out to you around that conversion and compliance. Uh, cognition layer, um, we have a data science workbench. Uh, the big thing that's the motivator on the data science workbench side, there are a lot of workbenches out there um, that you may be already familiar with. Uh, what we've tried to do is come up with a way of pulling those all together uh, into one single pane. So the whole idea behind Workbench is instead of having, um, say, PG admin uh, to deal with Postgres, uh, and then potentially having, say, um, Jupyter Notebooks uh, to, to integrate with each other, you're now switching between screens. Uh, it goes through and puts in a single pane uh, of glass. Uh, that's the, you know, the main, let's say, um, table stakes. Uh, what we're really looking at with the data science workbench is uh, to make it so it's easy to enable. Uh, one of the big things in the data science side is everybody has these single use cases, and all of a sudden you have a great idea, and you now need a place to run that. Um, you're now struggling to find a place to run that, and potentially that means setting up a new server. If you're in the cloud, maybe you're spinning up some new, uh, some new hardware, uh, or potentially if you're not able to do that, it means trying to go through and partner up with somebody else and run off their hardware. Now all of a sudden you have data overlap issues, security issues. Uh, so what we've done is it's a process, you know, um, some buzzwords here as far as uh, it's on Docker with Kubernetes, but what it's doing is creating a cluster on top of that, that you're able to, as a user, that you don't have to be a tech user, you go in, you're given a budget uh, that's allocated out to you from your overall environment owner, and you can spin up your own uh, environment. Uh, in this case, an environment I'll, I'll basically say is a cluster, uh, but enables to spin up your own use case. So no, you're now no longer going through and having to deal with your IT staff to enable your use case. You're able to go through and enable it yourself. And this is, you know, maybe you're saying today, well, I already could do that with AWS. This is something where you're able to spin up your individual tools. So I could say uh, one person wants to use MySQL, one person wants to use R, and they can spin that up for their own, own use cases. So it really makes it fast to go through and do those individual use cases. And that's something that's always a challenge on the data science side is to coming up with your use cases. Uh, we also have a model catalog. Um, Organizations, you know, large organizations have many models. Uh, the problem is there's a lot of overlap, and a lot of the overlap is because one group creates a model and another group doesn't know it exists. 
or potentially you have a situ it's a situation you're in financial services and you need to create a lot of documentation behind that model. So there's a lot of compliance related pieces and you want a place to save that, store that, uh, and be able to search for it. Uh, that's our model catalog. Uh, model manager is our situation around dealing with, uh, it's a product that offers a API connections and then it has a process for dealing with automation of models. Um, so it creates pipelines underneath that you can mix and match. So we try to be very agnostic. Uh, mixing, let's say, uh, creating a Python model, having that connect with an R model, and uh, also have a SAS model, and then maybe taking the best of those three, and then having that as one pipeline that can be called from a REST API. Uh, data supply chain, this is uh, hopefully relatively um, self-explanatory, but this is really around getting data into the system. Uh, the complex part about it is you can see a lot of the different data feeds, though. So, you know, the, the older stuff, it, maybe it's a simple um, database or some just basic files. Social, getting a little bit more complex. News, a little more complex. Getting into devices and sensors. Uh, now, all of a sudden, that's very complex because the question is how am I actually collecting it? How am I managing my sensors? How am I making sure all those uh, sensors are secure uh, and that data is reliable? And then back to the, the core plus piece. Uh, so, Getting into AIP in action, uh, hopefully you've already figured out AIP is not a particularly small thing. Uh, we have uh, more than 300 clients, uh, a number of different deal types out there. Uh, you can see where it is a global operation, so 24-7 support. Uh, that really does mean 24-7 um, off the app, uh, shelf applications, uh, number of pieces as far as deployment goes. Um, so we can do everything from 20 minutes to access a sandbox, and this is something you can spin up for a demo. Uh, we have a 70-person, 24-7 uh, global support team, and this is uh, just support in terms of uh, basically your L1, uh, your L2, uh, and then in terms of L3 is actually outside of that. So these are the people that are figuring out how to make sure that platform works as a whole, uh, not each individual layer. Uh, more than 9,000 users, uh, quite a few certifications. I talked about this a little bit before in terms of uh, we do have a FedRAMP option, we're HIPAA compliant, we're high trust certified, ISO um, 27,000 series certified. We manage more than nine petabytes of data, um, quite a few servers, a number of data partners. So not just do we have relationships with software vendors, we also have relationships with data providers. So uh, hopefully this will be a little bit more interesting uh, for folks. This is an example of a client that, we, uh, that we're working with. Uh, a little bit of background um, here is this client is a large beverage distributor in the United States. Uh, they've gone through a series of mergers and acquisitions. Um, so the main one that accumulated in bringing the AIP was a merger uh, of two companies coming together, but both those companies had a number of acquisitions before that. Um, so what's really happening behind the scenes there is it's a very splintered system. So it's not just talking about bringing in two systems, we're now talking about realistically two main systems, and I think it was potentially something like 20 other variants uh, underneath that. Uh, so what this really started out with was around what AIP came in was a clean room. Um, so in that original M&A um, portion, figuring out the overlap, uh, that over time morphed because they decided they didn't want to port any single, they didn't want to port to any single system. They, each one of the systems had their own issues, they were grandfathered in, in some way, so they decided they wanted to start with a clean slate. Um, and so, and the other problem was realistically, none of the systems without a lot of work had the capability to swallow the other systems. None of, they, didn't, they didn't have that extra capacity, so they couldn't easily go through and double, let's say, one side. In real reality, it wasn't even doubling one side because of all that splintering. Uh, so the number of legacy applications, um, no harmonization, a lot of issues around key performance indicators. Uh, so how Accenture came in and helped uh, was we came through with, a, with the overall the platform, so on the clean room side, so that's how it started out. But then we started coming through with other pieces. So great, once the initial clean room operation was done, how do we go through and actually start syncing up um, the company? Um, so we ended up with a hybrid infrastructure. Um, so we're using Hadoop for the data lake, uh, and we're using uh, Redshift as far as the warehouse, uh, a number of visualizations, and I'll get into example here about some of the software vendors um, that are involved and how this is all set up. Uh, in the end, what we're really looking at is how do we get um, near real-time reports for sales uh, employees. Uh, so I talked about this being a beverage distributor. So they're going around. Um, you can see in terms of they're across uh, 41 states, U.S., Caribbean, and Canada. And what it means, they have to go to retailers. Uh, and when they're at the retailers, they need to have dashboards to figure out how this particular retailer is doing. Uh, so quite a few sales reps and 
well, sales reps slash, let's say, distribution agents, uh, however you want to call them. Uh, but they need a way of seeing how they're currently doing. So now you're getting an idea, okay, now we're thinking a little bit dashboards. Uh, so some of the key features here, you know, a lot of this, the regular AIP portions that I talked about. Uh, this is a cloud-based service. Uh, it is pay-per-use, um, so it does scale as needed. Uh, this is a big, big environment. We are talking about more than 8,000 users. Um, so depending on what some of your engagements are, uh, this isn't a small amount of users to distribute data across. Uh, and we're, we're, there was a drastic improvement uh, in the overall uh, reduction as far as data ingestion. Um, so, you know, basically looking at almost dropping it, uh, effectively dro almost dropping it to nothing if you're looking at the 80% there and getting into on-demand stability. So being able to stand up their specific use case, uh, whether it's a data science side, whether it's an, a, something on the sales side. Uh, and then in terms of the results, so creating, we created, ended up creating one single integrated hub. Uh, we standardized BI across the organization. They originally had multiple uh, software vendors on from a BI side. Uh, we ended up creating new visualizations, uh, synchronizing their, uh, a lot of their KPIs, uh, went through and created a, a central vendor management system um, to go through and deal with basically the sprawl that had been previously uh, created. Um, so in terms of looking at the stack components, uh, for one, you'll notice that there are multiple vendors listed in each space. Uh, I mentioned that AIP has relationships with a number of software vendors. Uh, so, for example, in this case, uh, they, you know, had the option of Tableau, Click, SaaS, Power BI, uh, and we could have, from the AIP side, we could have easily come in and provided contracts for any of these. Uh, these would have been on a month-to-month -month basis, so they can go through and test them out. Uh, in the end, uh, they ended up selecting Tableau. Uh, they had multiple things originally. They actually, I think, had all all four of those options between the different companies. Uh, but in the end, they ended up selecting Tableau. Uh, for this particular area, uh, they, the data lake itself was Cloudera. Uh, I mentioned Redshift. They're also using S3 uh, for the data storage, and then Informatica for ingestion. Uh, so this is a little bit better idea of how all of that works. Uh, so the data, the data files come in uh, from various sources. Uh, they are entered into the system. They come in through WebSphere MQ. Um, and then there, you can see also in that same layer are the outbound files. Uh, the MQ portion is what handles the APIs. Uh, the data then flows in. If you'll notice around the, where we see VPCs, so you'll notice first of all there's a dotted line in total that's the environment, and within that there are four, uh, four VPCs, so virtual private clouds. Um, so first of all, from a security perspective, you have a firewall, which is the dotted line, uh, so it's separate from the rest of AWS. And then within that, we actually have also divided that into four main areas. So uh, in the end, to make sure even if one of these, if it was through the overall firewalls and from a security perspective, you, let's say, had somebody hack into any one of these areas, there's only so much data that's flowing across from uh, and permissions that are going from one VPC to another. Uh, and you can see as this flows through, the files are coming to that VPC. They're coming in through Hive, uh, Informatica, then they're dropping into S3. That's then porting across to Redshift. Uh, and then you can see as far as the, um, that last layer, as far as visualization, uh, well, Microsoft SQL isn't visualization, but it's one of the things that's feeding into um, Tableau and business objects, but they ended up with Tableau and business objects as their main, their main areas. And then the, uh, Tableau is, is the main area for visualization. So in the end, uh, 8,000 plus users uh, using Tableau. Um, and those are 24-7 uh, between these, you know, a beverage manufacturer, they, uh, it's not like they get to work all within the same day. It really does have to be up all the time. Um, tons of data engineering processes. Um, there's always uh, challenges about bringing the data. Um, because of the 24-7 nature, really you have very small time windows to get the data in and processed. Um, number of products coming through, uh, quite a few nodes, so 175 uh, nodes provisioned in AWS. Uh, and then we're providing that with 24-7 operations platform and support. Uh, and then all incidents have been resolved within the SLAs. Uh, so very complex system, um, really reiterating the scale, uh, dealing with Tableau. You can see this isn't something where we're talking about a few users. Uh, you can see you know, between AIP and Tableau that has the ability to drastically scale up uh, overall for large production environments. Uh, there are, are there any specific questions on this? I, I have another use case I'll go through, but just in case. Correct. Um, so because of, the way their, because of the way their business works, they potentially could have to be in a store at night. So, and then also, um, 
Well, for the type of business, they are, they're different retailers that are open 24-7. Um, so they may have to be in different locations. So there's, it really does actually, not just 24, but also by 7. So potentially on the weekend, uh, they may have to go meet with, with the store manager potentially on a Saturday night at 10 p.m. Or a retail, a retail location or a venue, potentially. Um, so, I mean, uh, that's part of it. I mean, it's also, uh, we're talking about across the U.S., and it is, it can include things like venues. So, uh, you can imagine, potentially, you might need to be there late on a Saturday night because it's uh, some particular uh, event that's going on. So, uh, it's a relatively complex environment. Um, hopefully, this gives you a quick idea of how, how that was set up. Uh, so, in terms of the other scale, um, so great, I went through an, a situation where we had a very large scale environment, you know, 8,000 plus users, so now all of a sudden you're, you're thinking, well, this only really works for large scale production environments. Uh, on the other hand, this is a very, the next use case here is a very small environment. You can see, you know, at the bottom left there, team of two, two gigabytes of data. Um, so this isn't particularly big. Where it really comes in is the speed to insights. Um, so this was a situation, this is a, a U.S. retailer, uh, more on the industrial side, and their business problem was they needed to go through quickly. Um, this is really was part of a strategy uh, engagement uh, and look at their uh, look at their sales data. Uh, and for certain business reasons, this needed to be done in a uh, in a hurry. Um, so they wanted to quickly go through. Uh, basically, the data was received in the morning. Um, they had a uh, there was a system up and running. Um, small team, but they were able to work collaboratively. Come in. Um, jump into the system, start using cloud, uh, Tableau, dig through the data quickly. Um, you know, not, not that different really than the Iron Viz Challenge kind of thing, except within a 24 hour time period. And so in the end, uh, the big thing was they, had, they needed to validate that original vision. Um, so they were able to validate that the, there was a 25, $45 million in new services uh, they could look at with that sales data. And then importantly for the client, uh, on the client team, on the client side, uh, is they were able to go through and uh, build the business case to fund two additional, uh, the build of two additional business cases. So they were to come up with the documentation, digging through that data, create the visuals, and be able to actually back all of that up. Um, so you have two examples here. One is really very much on the production side, um, massive scale, uh, t has taken several years to get there, um, and moving across number of migrations across all those different systems into one area, and an evolution from a basically a separate company into a data, a, let's say, a company that has data and now into a data-driven company. Um, as they're really, at, they're starting to work their way up the hierarchy, um, they'd started about just collecting the data and then figuring out how to get insights from the data and then figure out how to create, take action uh, to the second use case around, you know, something small. Uh, but really, how do I come in very quickly and make a true impact uh, and make sure you have the right tools for that uh, situation? Um, so if I remember correctly, they went through and um, the first thing was coming out the way to look at data. Um, so it, wasn't, it was the client had, realistically the client did, had data but they didn't really have any, that much knowledge of it. So the first thing was creating the framework. Um, so, you know, mock-ups you'll see so to speak, but it was based upon the data we had. Uh, in the end it was, I think it was business lines, they were trying to go through and evaluate whether or not, um, based upon past spend, whether they should, I forget if it was, um, I think it was expanded into a business line with additional support, if I remember correctly. Cool. Are there any other questions? So at this point in time, uh, in terms of how do you learn more, um, you can always go to our website, uh, or uh, we do have a booth here if you want to stop by. Um, Originally, when I put this in, I thought 416 would be something that might actually mean something. Uh, in reality, if you find us, I think it's outside of uh, DataCube uh, 2B, if I remember correctly, you'll find the Accenture booth. Um, otherwise, the 416, it turns out, uh, is meaningless uh, inside the Data Village. Uh, you can go through after this, and after the session is complete, go through and fill out the survey inside of the mobile app. Uh, make sure to click the My Evaluations portion uh, under your schedule. Uh, and at this point in time, uh, if there are any questions, um, that's the end of the conversation. For those of you that uh, maybe this is the first time you've heard of Accenture, um, here's a quick, uh, quick idea of Accenture. Um, so we are a large uh, consulting company with just under uh, half a million people. Um, so this means we can see, sorry, just under, yeah, just under half a million people. So that means we see a lot of different business cases across the globe. Um, so in terms of, it gives us a fairly good vision as far as what's going on with an AI, what company problems there are, and how to address those. Cool. 
Um, so for that particular use case, it was about being very quick initially. Um, that the other example, I forget for this for this one. Um, I don't remember how many people were actually involved. It's tough to say. I want to say over 100 realistically at some point in time. Um, so you, sometimes it's this example of okay, great. You know, small teams can be very efficient um, getting some initial insights, or realistically to make this actionable. So they, it, small team generated the insights, but to actually do something with it now will require a lot more people. And to make it production ready and something, um, go through and validate to make sure that data was pulled in the correct way uh, will require additional work. Uh, this was our team of two, correct. Yeah, this was real, it's part of a strategy engagement uh, where we're looking about trying to change the strategic direction of the company. Um, and so that's why it was so critical to come in in terms of do that initial analysis to figure out whether that, those assumptions were correct. And then that basically the resulting business cases were trying to figure out how they were going to change their structure of their company overall. Um, so in terms of we use a number of different... Um, so these are the main ones, but we use, realistically, we use a number of different uh, AI tools. Um, same, uh, for the most part, same as everybody else. One of the prominent ones is Python. Um, uh, well, I mean, these tools would sit on top of AWS. Um, so in terms of we, don't have, we haven't created a specific software uh, where we're going through and doing our... Uh, no, we don't have access to a supercomputer. <laughs> uh, it is very, it's cloud-based, so it would be whatever we can get access. Unless the client were providing us a supercomputer, <laughs> it would be whatever we could access in a normal cloud and market. So it would be AWS, Azure, uh, GCP, um, Alley Cloud. And unless I'm uh, unaware, I don't think any of those have a supercomputer that you can get access to. Cool. Do you have any other questions? I think we're good then. I'll give you back uh, 23 minutes then. Thank you.